I am the CEO for Destination Management India and South Asia for Kony Destination Management based out of Delhi in India. Uh, in fact, uh, Simon, I started out, uh, uh, my father being an army officer, he wanted me to be in a, in a profession which was at that time doctors, engineers, chartered accountants. So I actually studied to be a chartered accountant and then I realized this is not for me. And um, a, f a friend of mine owned one of the largest companies and he asked me to start his office in Jaipur. This was way back in 1989. And uh, so we set up an o I set up an office. I was all of 24 and I employed everybody who was younger than me. Because I thought at that time you think hierarchy, you know, it probably is age. <laughs> you know? And it was a lot of fun. We had, I had four very uh, enthusiastic young people straight out of college who joined me. And uh, they, we had, all of us had one, uh, you know, commonality between us. None of us knew what tourism was. So, <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, to, so that was where it all started. And, uh, and um, it, it was the first, I still remember on the 1st of August in 1989, we actually started operations of the office. And there was this young boy, young man who came along with me to the airport for our first airport transfer. And so we got into the bus and both of us were sitting in the bus heading to the airport and he looked at me and he said, you know, boss, what's an airport transfer? <laughs> I said, well, <laughs> wait till we get to the airport and I'll explain to you. And, you know, to be honest, he was one of the best guys who worked for me. It wasn't, uh, but it was, it was a lot of fun. We just started out as few uh, young people with a company that believed in us. And uh, it was it was great fun, and uh, no looking back since then. You know that's where uh, that's the space I, I I won't I've kept to. I've I've always been in destination management, never stepped out of it, and uh, it's been a it's been a great journey. Well, you know, uh, uh, there's an old saying: the harder you work, the luckier you get. So there were no shortcuts. I did airport. I started with the airport transfers, running a small office, client servicing, and uh, in about. Two and a half years, uh, I was asked to move to Bombay to the corporate office of, uh, of the company. And I started looking after the international sales and marketing for them. And eventually, uh, you know, worked with them for about seven to eight years in Bombay. So it was, it was a lot of fun. That's where you got all the exposure. You went overseas. You, you got into, you know, the, the sales part of the business. But uh, there was a lot of learning. And uh, it, it really was on the job. There was no university, there was no, no teachers. Well, your teachers were the people who worked around you. Yeah. And, um, you know, if you, if you love what, you, what you're doing, you, know, you, you find your way through. Uh, I worked for this large DMC that I mentioned earlier. And then uh, in 99, I set out with another two people to start a small DMC, uh, which was specialized in the incentive uh, space. Uh, we built that company up to a level in 2006 when Kony came and asked, uh, actually Kony came over and uh, they wanted to acquire us and uh, we, we did go ahead with the deal and um, uh, Kony at that time also uh, asked me if I would be interested to carry on within the space and I, I was young, I said well why not and that's uh, how I got into running the entire piece including the company that we sold. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing this since 2008. So our, actually our uh, growth into India started with acquiring Sita, which was then owned by a family, which we acquired in 2000 and then we made two more acquisitions. And that's really how we, we built our business uh, in, in India, it was through acquisitions. Um, we are in, in today's, uh, we, we are today the largest, the strongest, I won't say just the largest, but we are also one of the strongest uh, DMCs in, the, in this area and have been for the last 12 years. Uh, we are also, uh, you know, we built with, uh, I have a team of 370 professionals, we have 15 offices and the usual infrastructure. But I think um, uh, what is more important is that we have, um, we have built our business based on relationship, based on trust, based on certain values, uh, which are, I think, very much appreciated in the markets that we, we operate in. Traditionally, India uh, has been, uh, the, the breadbasket for business to India has been Europe. Um, and uh, what over the last few years there has been a little shift. Luckily for us, we have a, now we have a strong base. We always had a strong base in Europe. We also have a very strong base in Russia and CIS, uh, including Eastern Europe. And uh, we are building our business uh, out of Asia and Latin America from, from a growth uh, perspective. So uh, yes, traditionally it, it is Europe, which is which has and probably will be for the next few years. 
the main source of business. I think operating in India, we are very fortunate. Uh, I, uh, when I sit with colleagues from the company around the world, we realize this, that we are in a destination that has so much to offer. But um, it's, it's also a destination where you can create a lot by not doing too much. You know, so that way we have we have a we have a beautiful position that we are in, and um, uh, what we did uh, two year a few years ago is we built um, within the company uh, uh, we got a uh, a set of very interesting people uh, got them together and we set up the destination knowledge center which is really an um, a, a small um, a group of people who are thinking for the company and are are finding experiences. And we'll come to that, you know, experiential travel is really the future. So from our offering, it's really what we call Explore, uh, which is we come out twice a year, you know, spring, summer and, and, and winter as a collection of, of a few ideas, uh, which uh, involve uh, experiential travel, it, it involves getting people closer to the community, it involves uh, social projects. It, it, it's a bouquet of, of products which uh, customers would look at and, and demand over and above of what uh, uh, the regular itinerary provides, which which has been done for years, and I think this has been uh, this has been it has been received very well, um, and uh, we are we, we we keep creating products all the time, and uh, the idea is basically to you know what exists outside a hotel, which is not a monument, you know, and uh, I think that's what that's what people in the currently and in the future are going to demand. Uh, when they when they visit a place, so we are fortunate. We are in India, you know. We have enough. Uh, I think few things that are that are happening that are uh, that are interesting. People book at shorter notice. That is definitely one of the trends that's continuing, and we see it out of uh, different markets. I think uh, in the in the in the current situation, it's a lot to do about recession, and uh, there are customers who are you know the clients are not taking. Long haul, uh, long haul trips, or they are taking sh shorter trips. They don't want to go outside their their you know regional area. So that that is definitely the current challenge that they are facing. But at the same time, there is a lot to do with with booking at the last um, minute, and also for in the space we are in the B two B space. So you also do find, <coughs> pardon me. We also you also do find that. Uh, there is the threat of people going and finding out a lot themselves. You know, it's not just booking of a hotel. It's also the, the amount of information that is available um, that that can confuse customers many times. So there are different challenges. And like I said, if you come out with knowledge, yeah. if you have the knowledge, yeah. that has value. Surprisingly for us, even in markets like Asia or Latin America, there is a huge interest in uh, in experiential travel and you know whilst we do the traditional business we do we we have the luxury of also doing all the different kinds of traditional business we have the group, leisure group business we have charters coming into goa we have conferences we have mice uh, we have well, conferences we have incentive groups cruises you know uh, trains we do all the uh, the entire portfolio but i think this layer on top just adds to uh, the excitement of of Product India or, or the destination, and it's especially well received with tailor-made uh, holidays. People taking tailor-made holidays, which, as you know, is 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 growing, especially in India. It, it, the growth is phenomenal. I think the from from our perspective, um, value creation for the customer is is going to be a bigger challenge because you have uh, in the like I mentioned in the B two B space, you have customers who can find a product themselves. Uh, and we have to we have to create value for them. That's I think a challenge. I think one of the uh, key to the to the future is uh, adapting technology. You know you can't uh, sit back and say you know uh, our business is not going to grow because we don't have the technology. You know th that's for ten years. Uh, that was ten years ago. You could make a statement like that. today you have to adapt technology. And uh, and in the DMC space, I think uh, there is a huge opportunity because whatever is done over technology needs to be delivered right in the source market in in the in the market uh, so at the end of the day uh, for us there is i think a greater opportunity if there is technology uh, where people you know start booking more on technology or through the conventional uh, 
um, uh, means that they used to book IE tour operators or uh, you know, retail shops, but uh, I think at, at, at a destination level, we have a great opportunity because you need to deliver the product. In the last uh, few years, one of, one of the things that we did take on as an organization uh, worldwide and, and also specifically in India was that we decided we must have, uh, we, we took a very serious uh, approach towards our corporate social responsibility. And that was not just to, to to write an article in a paper or, or sign a check. We said, you know, we must get involved. And I'll give you uh, three very simple examples that, that worked out very well for all of us. Uh, we, one of our strategic objectives in CSR is to build, is, is child protection. And I think it's a very serious issue, you know, while we see the beautiful side of tourism, we also must uh, be careful about the dark side. And um, uh, what we did is that with our colleagues in Zurich, we, uh, we set up two, uh, twice we did um, workshops in Goa and Cochin to educate the stakeholders on the issues with regard to, you know, child protection and child uh, prostitution in, in these areas, which I think is, is a very sad and a very, uh, and then, you know, the, this is not something that we can we can even we, we need to just discuss we need to take some action and that's exactly what we did and um, we went out we had two uh, very good workshops very well attended we had uh, the stakeholders we had hoteliers we had guides uh, we had the uh, people from the police department from the ministry of tourism and uh, we i think may have made a big difference in goa and in trivandrum and we repeated these workshops and uh, interestingly, Pata gave us a gold award for that, which is which is nice. But uh, I think more than more than that, I think it was it was a sense of achievement for all of us that we were able to take on an issue uh, in a, in a social environment, which which doesn't really you doesn't want to notice things like this. And I think that was one very interesting uh, step forward. The other thing that we did, um, which actually is, um, I would say, one of my favorite. Uh, uh, <laughs> favorite um, uh, projects that we did on, on a more, more than a CSR, it was more involvement of people. We, we worked on an empowerment of women project near our office. And um, we give these handbags out to customers with documents in it. And um, uh, we used to give out a very fancy looking bag. And, and we met this lady who runs this uh, project. And they recycle paper. So, and their raw material is newspapers. So we went to her and we said, um, why, why don't you give us a few samples? Of, can, you know, can you make our bags with the colors that we need? And sure enough, she could do it. So now we run this project. It's, we actually collect newspapers in the office, right? Everybody brings newspapers. And one team a week goes and delivers the newspaper to, the fa to this. Uh, it's not really a factory. It's just a little shed where they, where they convert this newspaper into bags. And then we buy the bags back from them at a, at a you know, higher than market value and uh, we give it to our customers. It costs me one third to buy those bags. And uh, I think the greatest achievement in all of this for me is that the people involved in operating businesses are also involved in the project. You know, it's not like I'll just buy the bags. We all bring newspapers on Monday. You know, in India, you sell the newspaper. Somebody comes home and buys the newspapers from you. So instead of doing that, you bring the newspapers to, to the office, collect them, we take them to this to the project. That's the raw material. And I think there's a great sense of everybody feels connected to what is being done. And we are, we are there is a school that's running based on uh, the profits that this place makes. Uh, there are women around from that, uh, women from the village who are in part, I think they get, they have jobs, they have, uh, they have, a, they have a future. That's very interesting. These are two, I think two, um, uh, you know, of course you do business, yeah. you make profit, yeah. Yeah. you build markets. <laughs> but I think um, uh, for, one of, for me, one of the, the I think these achievements, we are, you know, we are far ahead than anybody else in the industry. And this is not being competitive. This is just being uh, more on the fact that it's time, you know, the industry does, also does more in, in a country like India. I would say one of the things that we should not forget is that people travel for authentic experiences. Um, you have to be, we have, the countries have to be very careful about 
the product they build. I'm not talking of infrastructure. People don't want hassle. So you build great airports, you build great roads, metros, you know, water, um, uh, taxis, whatever that you want to build around in, in, in cities. But the, the product, people have to be very careful that if they have too much of the same, you are going to end up not being able to sustain uh, your um, wow for the market in the future. And, and, and that we have to be very careful of, you know, we, uh, authentic experiences, we should not, you know, everything is not about big shopping malls or big hotels or, or more of the same is what we need to be very careful about. Because the driver is always, I, you know, people leave their shows because they want to A, learn, they want to, uh, they want to uh, be in a different culture, uh, and they want to go back having felt that they've, they've seen something which is, which is amazing. Not, a, not all the time, but at least they want to be away from what their day-to-day uh, their -day life is. And if we start building too much of the same around the world, uh, it's going to become, it, it is definitely going to be a big problem. And, and I think also for the industry at large, they'll need to wake up, everybody will need to, you know, wake up to uh, the fact that people are sensitive towards sustainability, they're sensitive towards uh, various forms of uh, social responsibility. And that's going to weave into this whole uh, travel offering in the future. And I think if, if we, we, we are sensitive about a few facts, I'm sure we'll be, you know, we should do well, all of us. Well, my current favorite is South Africa. Well, I, I think um, it's the Kruger National Park was just amazing. And the experience of being in the jungle and the way it's organized and, and the hotels, the infrastructure, it's so easy to travel around. I have a six-year-old and there was no problem in, in traveling around the place. It's so well organized. And, and the product is fantastic. You know, the quality of guides that we, uh, we had in the, in the parks, uh, we stayed in these, these, these hotels which are so well run. And I think uh, for, for me, there was, a, there was a huge learning when you come from the service industry uh, uh, to see how these places, these, these Singita hotels which are based out of Kruger. And uh, the, the guides that went along with us, the knowledge, and they're doing it, you know, they're not doing, they haven't done a guide course and come onto the Jeep. They're in fact people who had regular jobs like you and me, if our jobs are regular, <laughs> regular jobs like you and me, and they actually came out into, uh, they, they left what they were doing to, to come out into the wild and, and share uh, their passion for, for wildlife.